Hello everyone, Jeff here with an example of valuing a stock based on the present value of its dividends and the amount you expect to sell the stock for in the future. This is a version of the dividends and earnings approach. The idea again is that when we purchase a stock, we are entitled to a series of cash flows in the future. In this particular method, we're looking at the dividends we're going to get. And uh, in this case, there's nothing uh, easy really about the dividends. They're not constant. They're not constantly growing. So we can't use the easier formulas. Here we have a series of variable dividends. And so we are going to treat this as a plain present value problem. Uh, we're going to be getting this cash in the future. We're gonna take all of these amounts we're gonna get in the future and discount them to present value. And that is what the value of the stock should be. So um, in this problem, we have an, a stock expecting to pay these dividends that are listed here. We also expect to be able to sell the stock in four years for $100, and we have a required return of 9%. Uh, however, we found that maybe a cap M analysis, and it's asking to find the value of the stock. So like I said, we are going to treat this as a plain present value problem. Um, and let me make these numbers bigger. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type the things first without the equal sign so you can see what's going on. First, remember that our regular present value formula tells us to take the amount we're considering and divide by 1 plus the interest rate, which in this case is a required return, raised to the um, N or T sometimes of the time, the number of years from now you're going to expect to receive that. So that's what we're going to do here. In year one, we're going to receive a $3 dividend. We are going to divide by one plus the interest rate. The interest rate is 0.099%. That's our required return. That's the rate we're using in this type of problem. So 1.09 raised to the one if you want to because it's year one, although raising to the one doesn't do anything. We don't really need that. Uh, in year two, we're going to receive $3.20. We're going to divide by one plus the interest rate, which is 1.09, and we're gonna raise that to the second power because it's received in year two. In year three, $3.42, divided by one plus R, 1.09, raised to the three, it's received in year three. Then 3.65, divided by, one plus the interest rate raised to the year we receive that plus we expect to be able to sell the stock in four years for one hundred dollars we need to bring that to present value as well we do it by dividing by 1.09 raised to the four because we're receiving that money four years from now so that's what that would look like then we can just go throw equal signs in here to get the actual numbers you can, of course, throw the equal signs in to start. All right, so those are uh, each of the present values. To when we add those things up, we get $81.51. That would be the value of this stock if everything that we expect to come true actually comes true. This would be a good deal based on our analysis if the price of the stock is actually less than $81.51. And if the price of the stock is more than 8151, it may be overvalued according to our analysis here. Again, remember, this is a plain present value problem. Uh, you may want to review the video on present value if I went through those steps a little fast.